can we just lift our hands right now and thank God for His mercy? Come on, can we just entertain the presence of Almighty God right now in your living room, right? Wherever you are, would you just entertain the presence of Almighty God? Oh, we want Him to be welcome in this house. We want Him welcome in this place today. Lord, we love You. Lord, we love You, Jesus. We lift You up and adore You. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. It is good to have everyone join us today. Wonderful Sunday morning as we come together and magnify the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Thank you for tuning in. And uh, we hope to be back to normal soon in the sense of having church here in the, in the building. Uh, and so I'm hoping May 10th, Mother's Day, will be our day to do so. Uh, but until then, we're going to just magnify the King of Kings wherever we are. Lift up the name of the Lord. He's worthy of all the praise, whether we're at your house or we're at his house, whether we're in the car or on the job, God's worthy of all the praise, and we want to give him glory and honor today. We are in for a special treat, Calvary Tabernacle. I talked about a week and a half ago or so with my friend, Brother Landon Gore, and uh, put this together for today, and I'm excited to have him join us. Brother Gore is not just a young preacher, he's an international evangelist, and has preached literally all over the world, uh, even at 26 years old, he is well known among our ranks as an apostolic voice for this generation. And I'm thankful not just to have him with us today, but to call him friend. And we're going to allow him to minister. Uh, the neat thing about online service is that we can, we can have him join us even though he's not physically with us. But he's going to share a word with us today. And I hope and pray that you are blessed during this word. God bless you. Brother Gore, come and speak to us today. Praise the Lord, everyone. This is Landon Gore. I am so excited to be joining you today, and I am so thrilled to have the opportunity to share the next few moments with you. I give high honor to your pastor and your team that is making all of this happen in the middle of these uh, unique but exciting, exciting times. And I'm just so thankful um, that we get to share these next few moments together. And I know you've already been feeling the presence of God, and I pray that you're going to continue to and that you would be encouraged. And again, I'm just delighted to have this opportunity. And I love your pastor and family very, very much and so appreciate their contribution uh, to the kingdom of God and for allowing me to have this time with you all. I want you to go with me to the book of Romans, the book of Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8 and verse 11. I'm going to read one passage of scripture for you today. Romans chapter 8 verse 11. And it says these words. But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you. I want to speak to you the next few moments on this simple subject, that same spirit. Would you close your eyes with me for just a moment? God, I thank you for every single man and woman, every boy and girl, every family that is watching this stream right now, even those that come back and watch the replay. God, I pray that your angels, God, would be with them where they are watching. I pray that your presence, God, would be with them, God, whether they're in the car, whether they're in their office or their home. I pray that you would minister to them. I pray that you would speak to them. And God, I thank you, God, for the ability, God, to use technology to be able to share your word today. And I thank you for what you will do. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen, amen. I want to take us back to the very beginning. There was darkness, there was emptiness, there was void. Cosmic confusion and colorless chaos. A deep unknown and a formidable uncertainty. Yet we find that the Spirit of the Lord begins to move and brood and hover over the wild, watery darkness. The Spirit of God would begin to speak, every word taking on form. God was not just speaking, God was creating. Humanity would soon be initiated, the miracle of mankind now emerging forth in its first few baby steps. Adam and Eve would make a decision that would thrust the entire human race into a headlong struggle with sin and with shame. 
yet heaven was prepared. The Spirit of God was going to put on skin. Deity was going to put on humanity. A rescue mission unlike any other that had been meticulously arranged was getting ready to happen. What was the strategy? Love. What was the mission? The Lamb of God slain from the foundation of the world. Our story would continue in a city called Bethlehem, a neighborhood on the wrong side of the tracks, a very unlikely couple that no one expected to be part of this unique scenario and story. A man named Joseph, a girl named Mary, dreams, angels. Earth would call it a scandal, but heaven would call it a savior. A virgin would conceive, a baby would be born, Emmanuel, the Spirit of God with us. The Spirit of God now had hands, the Spirit of God now had feet, the Spirit of God now had eyes, the Spirit of God now had dimples, hair, a face. The Spirit of God was now with us. For as scripture would proclaim, we do not have a high priest who cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmity, but when was in all points tempted like we are, yet without sin. He was the lion, and yet he would also be the lamb. He was the root of Jesse, and yet he would also be the offspring of David. He was the bright and morning star, and yet he would become the lily in the valley. He was the fame of heaven yet he took on no reputation. He was the ruler of all rulers, and yet he would become the servant of all servants. He was the creator of the universe, and yet he would allow himself to be placed in the hands of creation. In the natural, Bethlehem would be his home, but in the supernatural, heaven was his home. In the natural, he would hunger and thirst, but in the supernatural, he would walk on water, and he would multiply the bread and the loaves and fishes. He would go about this man named Jesus, the Spirit of God with us, healing and delivering and forgiving, saving and setting free. He was sent to destroy every single work of Satan. He was hell's worst nightmare, and yet he was sinner's dream come true. Soon the treasure of heaven would come face to face with the vilest of evil that mankind could muster. The roller coaster of agony would then ensue. Palm Sunday, cheers of Hosanna. Him washing the feet of those closest to him. Having a last supper, even with the very one that would betray him for the price of a slave. Gethsemane a time of prayer and reprieve, a place where he would beckon heaven to remove the cup of suffering. And yet he would still declare, not my will, but your will be done. He is soon arrested. He is soon tried before false witnesses. His disciples, colleagues, and friends have abandoned him. Even one is now cursing. He is whipped to the very doorstep of death. He is soon asked to carry a cross. His body is drained of strength. Sinew and skin is shattered and scattered upon him. He has no more strength left. He barely has any more blood. So now someone else is asked to carry his cross. As they make the journey up, a school-shaped hill called Gal. Gotha. Nails are now impaling his hands, a nail impaling his feet. A spear is going to go through his side, and with a great sigh from the Savior, the words, it is finished, would emerge from his lips. The bro broken, bloody body of our Lord and Savior is now buried in a borrowed tomb, Guards are placed outside so that nobody can get in and burglarize the body. Heaven seemed quiet. The spirit seemed to be forever silenced. In my mind, I imagine that 
hell begins to commence a party. They take out the balloons, the whistles, and the fruit punch. All of a sudden, the adversary is laughing long and loud. But what he did not know is that heaven would laugh last. For the fool hath said in their heart, there is no God. So hell began to party like fools. Day one, they shouted, there is no God. Day two, they screamed, there is no God. Day three, they began a chorus, there is no God. Until an interruption came through the corridors of that dark demonic place. A reporter from the earthly, letting them know the grim news that a rumor had been spreading. A rumor that the tomb was empty. A rumor that Jesus had arisen from the grave. The worst part about this rumor, as was reported to the adversary, the high commands Lucifer, Satan himself, came the words, the rumor is not a rumor. People have seen him. There have been eyewitness accounts that this man named Jesus, the Spirit of God robed in flesh, was no longer buried, no longer in the sepulcher. But now the stone had been rolled away and the tomb was indeed empty. All of a sudden, this man named Jesus is appearing to his disciples. He lets them know that he is going to ascend. He is going to go and he is going to prepare a place for them. That way where he is, they may be also. He lets them know that he is not going to leave them comfortless, but he is going to send his spirit upon them. What spirit is this? It is the spirit of God that moved over the deep, over the dark, and created the world and placed it into existence. The one who spoke and everything that we see and know became a reality. The same spirit that would walk upon the earth, redeeming mankind. The disciples would run to an upper room. They would tarry in Jerusalem. There they would pray. There they would seek. Everything seemed to be okay for a time. Hell did not know all that was taking place, but just maybe, just maybe, the resurrection power that had been displayed had now begun to quiet down once more. Perhaps, perhaps heaven was, was no longer robust in all of its glory and all of its power and majesty. But all of a sudden, their fear of all fears would take place. As on the day of Pentecost in Acts chapter 2, there would come a rushing mighty wind as the Spirit of God would begin to fill that upper room. And it would begin to settle on every man, every woman, every boy, and every girl, every person in attendance allowing each person to have a supernatural experience as God filled each and every person with the gift of his spirit. Onlookers began to come around. They thought that those in this upper chamber praying were drunk. They began to, to wonder, to scratch their heads about what was going on until Peter would emerge forth and he would slam the door behind him Standing up with the leaven, he would declare to them, this is not just an isolated event. This is not just something for us. This is not just something for the spiritual elite. This is not just a public confession of faith. No, what had just transpired was for every single person. It had been prophesied of old. The prophets had put pen to parchment and they had declared that in the last days, God was going to pour out his spirit upon all flesh, upon the old and upon the young, upon the rich and upon the poor. Every nation, every tribe, every tongue, every ethnicity would have the ability to have access to this promise. 
They begin to ask Peter, what do we need to do to encounter this salvific experience? Peter would open up his mouth and it would be his voice, but it would be the words of God as he would declare to them under the unction and anointing of heaven, repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ and you shall receive the gift of God's spirit for it is a promise that is unto you and to your children and to them that are afar off as many as the Lord our God shall call. What spirit was it? It was the same spirit that created the world in its infancy. It was the same spirit that moved about in the flesh of humanity and performed miracle signs and wonders. It was the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead on the third day. And it was now not being confined to an upper chamber or room, but it was now spreading into the streets as God God began to feel one after another with this great majestic gift of his spirit. Not just the presence of God moving around, but the presence of God moving and dwelling within. Can I tell you that in the book of Acts, that great continuation of the spirit flows all the way from then until now. People all over the world are experiencing that same spirit. People all over the world are experiencing resurrection power. Now, I know that we have recently celebrated Easter and what a joyous moment it would be if every single one of us could have an eyewitness account of that tomb. It would be so wonderful if every single one of us could take a journey to the Holy Land and our our fingers and our hands could touch the texture of that tomb and we could feel the stone that was rolled away. We could peek inside and we could see that gloomy, dark dungeon that the body of Jesus was buried in. But unfortunately, we cannot all do that. We are all not afforded that luxury. But you know what we can do? You know what I can do? I can take you to my tomb. I can take you to the place where God brought me out. I can take you to person after person, testimony after testimony, people that were uh, addicted, people that were atheists and did not believe in God, people, people that were jaded and scarred by life, people that were emotionally wounded, people that were, were sick in their bodies, people from all over the world, every ethnicity, every background. I could take you to the place where Jesus Christ called their name. And it did not matter the past. It did not matter the shame. It did not matter how tightly or how long they had been locked up and secluded. It did not matter the condemnation. It did not matter the fear. It did not matter the anxiety, the sickness or the sin. When Jesus called their name, they emerged forth. They had an experience for themselves. They asked God to forgive them. They were baptized in the name of Jesus and they too were filled with the gift of God's spirit evidenced by speaking in tongues. I want to remind you that while we have just celebrated an empty grave and we have just celebrated a risen Savior, I want to remind you, those that are watching, every single person, I have to remind you that we do not just celebrate one empty grave and one risen Savior, but we celebrate every son and every daughter that he in turn has resurrected, that he in turn has brought out of their past sin and shame. I want to tell you today that no matter who you are, that same spirit is moving all across the world right now as we speak. Right now in your home, I believe the spirit of God is moving. I believe the spirit of God is reaching. This is my challenge to you today. If you have never asked God to forgive you, I want to challenge you to ask God to forgive you. 
If you have never been baptized in the name of Jesus, the pattern that would, was given to us in the New Testament, it was seen all throughout scripture. The only way that they were ever baptized, if you have never been baptized by this scriptural pattern, I want to challenge you to not wait, but to be baptized in the name of Jesus. Get a hold of us, reach out, send a message. We want to connect with you. And this is my third challenge. If you have never received the gift of God's spirit, you have the ability, even right now in your home, to raise your hands. You have the ability, after you have asked the Lord to forgive you, to begin to open up your mouth and to begin to worship God, to begin to praise God. What does that mean? That means something like this. God, I love you. God, I worship you. God, I praise you. God, I need you in my life. God, I surrender everything to you, my past, my present, and my future. I do not want to go any further without your presence dwelling and overflowing on the inside of me. And can I tell you what will happen? The very same thing that took place in the book of Acts. As you begin to worship, Scripture says he inhabits the praises of his people. As you begin to bless his name, all of a sudden you are giving God your voice. You are giving God your tongue. You are giving God your words. And all of a sudden his spirit begins to flow in and it begins to flow out of your mouth. Your tongue will begin to shake and move. You, you're you going to start to feel sounds that you don't understand. You're going to want to speak it out. Don't hold it in. Let it overflow out. That is the Spirit of God. That is the presence of God moving to you and flowing on the inside of you. It is a promise for every single one of us. I want to challenge you to pray right where you are. I'm going to speak a word of faith over you. This live stream is going to end, but I want to challenge you. Don't think that you have to stop praying. Don't think that you have to stop reaching out for God. My small portion in this equation is about to be done, but I believe God wants to meet you right where you are, and I believe that he wants to do something supernatural in your life. I believe God's spirit can fill you. I believe God's spirit can heal you. So I want you to close your eyes for just a moment. And I want us to pray together. God, by the power of your word and the authority of your name, I loose your perfect love over every home, over every person that is watching this. God, your perfect love that cast out fear, that cast out condemnation. God, by your power and by your authority, I loose your spirit to fall upon every hungry soul. I ask you to move and to minister over every heart today. Those that have already had this experience, I pray that you would refresh them, that you would renew them. God, I speak over their mind. I speak over their spirit spirit. I speak over their health. I speak over their family. I speak over their finances, God. I pray in the name of Jesus that your presence would envelop them. God, those that are watching today that are seeking this experience for the first time, I release a liberty upon them. Let your joy come upon them. Let your love come upon them. Let your strength come upon them, God. I thank you for what you are doing right now. I believe that you are moving out as we speak and as we pray. And I thank you for it, God. I thank you for it, God, in the name of Jesus Christ. God bless you all. Thank you for sharing this time with me and allowing me to share this time with you. I pray that if God moves in your midst, that you would reach out, that you would message, that you would connect, that you would get a hold of someone, that you would testify about what God has done. If you want a Bible study, if you want to learn more, reach out. We want to connect with you. This is just the beginning of what God is doing in our lives.